Picture this. You're standing on a mountain, which creates this beautiful peak that rises up from the landscape. Now here's where it gets interesting. You can't just walk anywhere on this mountain. Instead, you're restricted to follow this specific yellow path that circles around the peak, and your goal is to find the highest point you can reach while staying on this allowed path. That red dot you see is exactly where you want to be, the optimal point where you achieve maximum height while respecting your constraint. So the natural question is, how do we actually find this special point mathematically? Let's transition from our three-dimensional mountain view down to a cleaner two-dimensional perspective where we can really see what's happening. Here we have our function f of x comma y equals 8 minus x squared minus y squared plotted on standard x, y axis. When you're trying to maximize a function without any constraints, the strategy is pretty straightforward. You just follow the gradient. These blue arrows show the gradient field and they all point toward the direction of steepest increase. If you start anywhere and keep following these arrows, you'll trace out a path that leads you straight to the peak, which for our function sits right at the origin where x equals 0 and y equals 0. But now let's bring back our constraint. We have to stay on this yellow circle defined by x squared plus y squared equals 2.25. This changes everything because now we can't just follow the gradient wherever it wants to take us. Watch what happens when we try to move along the constraint. At most points, the gradient is trying to pull us off the curve, but we can't follow it because we're stuck on our circular path. Here's where the magic happens. Let me show you the level curves of our function. These blue circles represent points where the function has constant values with f equals 1, f here equals 3, and so on. Now watch as I animate a level curve expanding from the center. It starts with a high value near the peak and the value decreases as the circle grows. Keep watching, there, right when the expanding level curve becomes tangent to our yellow constraint circle. That's our optimal point. And here's the key insight that makes Lagrange multipliers work. At this tangent point, look at the gradient of our function f, shown in blue and the gradient of our constraint function, g shown in yellow. They're pointing in exactly the same direction. When the gradients become parallel, like this, we know we found our optimum. This geometric observation translates directly into the mathematical equation at the heart of Lagrange multipliers. Gradient FEN equals lambda times gradient g, where lambda is a scalar we call the Lagrange multiplier. It tells us how much we need to scale the gradient of g to make it match the gradient of f. Together with our original constraint equation, this gives us a system of equations we can solve to find our optimal point. Let me show you how this works with a different example. Suppose we want to maximize the product x times y subject to the constraint that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So we are looking for points on the unit circle. The gradient of f has components y and x, while the gradient of g has components 2x and 2y. When we solve the system of equations from our Lagrange condition, we find four critical points, two maxima at x equals y equals plus or minus 1 over square root of 2, and two minima at the points where x and y have opposite signs. Now, you might wonder what this lambda parameter actually means beyond just being a mathematical tool. It turns out lambda measures the sensitivity of your optimal value to changes in the constraint. Essentially, it tells you how much your maximum value would improve if you could relax the constraint slightly. This makes it incredibly valuable for deciding whether it's worth investing resources to loosen a constraint. The elegance of Lagrange multipliers is that they transform a constraint optimization problem into finding where gradients align. Instead of searching along curves or surfaces, we simply solve a system of equations. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.